through 20, the text teaches how a negative declaration can cause a cessation to the delivery of the dream in your life. The literal word in a literal sense, or a literal sense as we look at it, the word cessation is the process of ending something or bringing something to an end. It indicates stopping something or something being cut short before it's finished. Okay? Tell your neighbor, I don't want my destiny to be cut short before it's finished. I don't want the supernatural to be stopped in my life. Can I get a witness somewhere? Luke chapter 1 verses 18 through 20. The text teaches us how it is possible for an abrupt interrupt to stop the supernatural in your life. Put your hand up right now and say this with me. In the name of Jesus, nothing's going to stop the miraculous momentum of miracles in my life. I will not allow negative words to be spoken around my dream. In the name of Jesus, as I give birth to the dream in 2016, I will not allow negative words to stop the power of God or to stop the supernatural seed that God is planting in my destiny. Can I get a witness somewhere? Somebody ought to say amen. In a literal sense of scripture, Elizabeth was biologically barren and she was stricken with years. Elizabeth, in her biological barrenness, was of great age. And it demonstrates to us how God delivers the dream in us despite our weakness. Here she was, biologically barren. She was stricken with years. But Elizabeth is a symbol, just like Mary was a symbol. Mary had nothing in the natural. But God said, if you don't believe, then let me just give you another piece of evidence how the ingredients to the impossible work to show you how a destiny is delivered. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm depending too much on myself. I'm depending too much on my circumstances. Tell your neighbor this year, in 2016, I'm going to move out of trusting myself and move in to trusting God and his word, trusting God and his power. Somebody ought to say amen. Elizabeth, in her biological barrenness, in her great age, not just biological barrenness, God says, I'm going to doubly show you that I can do anything. I'm going to show you that when it's your season and when it's your time and when you've been walking in my ways and keeping my commandments and following after me and hoping for the season to come, that God is saying that season will come and you're getting ready for a supernatural shift. Somebody ought to say say a supernatural shift. Elizabeth in her biological barrenness and great age demonstrates how God delivers the dream in us despite our weakness, despite our incapabilities and our numerous debilities that in the natural that we would think these these debilities and incapabilities would disqualify us from the dream. Some of us have already disqualified ourselves. Daily we disqualify ourselves by that little tape that runs in our mind that is not of God. It's a negative tape. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm changing the tape this year. Okay, it's a negative tape. Because we need to understand this supernatural secret of how destiny is delivered in our lives. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give praise to God. That means that a negative declaration can cause a cessation of the delivery of the dream in your life. So we need to cut the tape. Touch your neighbor and say, cut the tape. Because it's a lying spirit from the pit of hell. So if you don't have the money, that's not a problem with God. If you're a little bit too old, that's not a problem with God. If your body doesn't work right, that's not a problem with God. If man 
man doesn't accept you, that's not a problem with God. Mary, in the, it shows us in the Christmas story that nothing in the natural was necessary for God to perform his miracle. And now Elizabeth shows us in the Christmas story that even though you may think that you're disqualified from destiny, she was biologically barren and of great age, but God can still do it. I can get any help in here. In a literal sense of scripture, as we look, Elizabeth in her biological barrenness and great age teaches us that nothing can disqualify us from death, destiny but negative words. Touch your neighbor and say, the only thing that can disqualify my destiny in 2016 is being around negative words. Somebody ought to say we're cutting the tape of those negative words. In Luke 1.18, the context conveys that the negative declaration will cause a cessation in destiny. Negative words would have, touch your neighbor and say, but they didn't because God stopped it. Negative words would have caused Elizabeth to miscarry her miracle. I can't get any help in here. I said... Negative words would have brought a miscarriage to the miracle of John the Baptist had the angel not shut the mouth of Zechariah. Somebody ought to give God the praise. And Zechariah said, Luke 1.18, and Zechariah said to the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For, my, for I am old, and my wife is well stricken with ears. Verse 19, and the angel answered and said, I am Gabriel. Hey, wait a minute. You're not just talking to the guy down the street. I am Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God. This was not just a little thing that came to you. Touch your neighbor and say, don't you underestimate your destiny and don't degrade it down with doubt. I can't get any help in here. Some folk won't believe even if Angel Gabriel comes and tells them what God has prepared for them because they're so filled with negativity. But tonight in the name of Jesus, we're breaking off that negative tape. We're breaking off that negative spirit. Tell your neighbor, I'm not bringing it into 2016. I'm bringing faith into 2016. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The angel said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, verse 20. And behold, now you shall be dumb. And unable to speak because you believed not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Unable to speak means God had to silence the negative declaration that would have caused a termination of Elizabeth's pregnancy had he been allowed to speak a little longer. Touch your neighbor and say we're getting rid of every negative declaration around our destiny. Somebody ought to say this is the year I'm going to walk in the power of the word because I may not have it in the natural, but I'm not going to depend on what I have in the natural. I'm going forward to do God's work with nothing in the natural. Somebody ought to shout amen. You shall be dumb and unable to speak shows us why Gabriel had to silence the speech because the words could have caused Elizabeth 
to miscarry and his doubts were so strong they would have destroyed the dream but you need to say in the name of jesus you see i tell your neighbor i've come to a new place i've learned to trust god for everything God has allowed me to walk through fire. God has allowed me to walk through flood. And that's the time God shows up. Somebody ought to say, God's getting ready to show up. If I don't have the strength, he's going to show up. If I don't have the finances, he's going to show up. If I don't have the know-how, he's going to show up. I can get any help in here. know who I'm preaching to I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight put your hand up right now and say Holy Ghost do a new thing first thing before 2016 change my words change my declaration change my thinking change my words that come out concerning my dream my destiny my future my plans everything you're gonna do father god may i speak that the promises of god will be yea and amen to him that believe it So Zachariah shows us, when you think of Zachariah, you think of the man who couldn't speak for nine months. Touch your neighbor and say, let that direct my destiny in 2016. Come on. Let that direct my destiny in 2016. No negative declaration that will cause a termination to this miracle being birthed out in my life. In the name of Jesus. The second supernatural secret of the delivery of a destiny in us is prophetically prefigured in Elizabeth herself. This second supernatural secret is that once you believe, you have to protect what you conceive through prayer. I'm going to say that again. Once you believe, you have to protect what you conceive through prayer. That means that seed that's grown inside of you has to be protected through prayer. And I'm not just talking about a prayer meeting that you just go to once a week. I'm talking about your own individual quiet devotion prayer time. And we're going to see this because Elizabeth shows us that prayer is the process that produces the power of the dream in us. Elizabeth shows us that once we believe and we protect what we conceive through prayer, that it is the primary principle of how destiny is delivered in us. Touch your neighbor and say, it's a primary principle of how destiny is delivered in us. Elizabeth shows us that once we believe and we move forward to pro protect what we conceive through prayer. She shows us that prayer preserves the dream so that nothing moves us out of the miraculous. Touch your neighbor and say, I got to keep this seed inside of me. Come on, I got to keep this seed inside of me. I don't want anything to move me out of the miraculous. I don't want anything to distract me. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to be completely focused on the dream that God has given me in 2016. So that means you're not going to get distracted by the things that the devil tries to put in your life. He's going to try to put things to pull you out of your place, try to remove you out of serving God. But you've got to stay focused focused on what God has told you to do no matter what happens in Luke chapter 1 verses 24 and 25 the text teaches that Elizabeth hid herself 
for five months, which is a supernatural similarity to prayer. Look at the word, verse 24. And after those days, his wife conceived and hid herself for five months. Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me and removed my reproach among men. The Bible says she hid herself five months, and it is a supernatural similitude of shutting in with God. Somebody ought to say, once God gives me the word, once I get my prophetic word for 2016, I need to shut in with God and start praying over that word, start protecting that word. Hallelujah. Because what... Because what God has given me, I'm going to protect it through the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, Jesus said, And when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you openly. She hid herself for five months, and it prophetically prefigures how prayer is the, is the process of supernatural incubation for the miraculous manifestation of the dream in us. Touch your neighbor and say, I want to incubate the prophecy. I want to incubate the word. Come on, I want to incubate it before it's born. Hallelujah. Now watch this. In a literal sense of scripture, she hid herself five months, which prophetically prefigures how experts teach us that the first 20 weeks of pregnancy are usually the time that a miscarriage occurs. How many miscarriages spiritually do we have in this room that we're not even aware of? Okay, persons that got pregnant with destiny, got an anointing in a service, got a prophetic word, got a word from prayer of what God was going to do in their life. But because they got around something negative, they miscarried their miracle. They heard negative words and they miscarried their miracle or because they did not know that when you believe, you have to protect what you conceive through prayer. Folk going around blaming God Saying God you gave me that word And I didn't see it come to pass Touch your neighbor and say God is not a Santa Claus Come on Touch your neighbor and say Joshua Had to go in and possess the promises of God Touch your neighbor and say Abraham Had to take every step by faith And little by little possess the promises of God There is a process to the promises So we need to apply it. Apply it means these supernatural steps that God has given us, that we're going to put them in our mind, we're going to write them down, we're going to pray over them, we're going to start practicing them and activating them. And we can only do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that what we believe, what we take what we believe, and we protect what we conceive, through hiding ourselves in prayer. She was hidden five months. And so the experts tell us the first 20 weeks of pregnancy is usually when all the miscarriages take place. And as we said a moment ago, many of us don't even know we had a miscarriage. Okay, We don't even know we miscarried a dream. We don't even know we miscarried a place in ministry. We got, we got a, a great anointing. Somebody gave us a word. We started serving. And then we got around somebody that gave a negative word to us. And we started to doubt. And we lost the baby. Hello, somebody. Can I get a witness somewhere? Or it not only works with a one-time destiny. When you're getting ready to go up to another level. Touch your neighbor and say, when I'm getting ready to experience supernatural graduation into the elevation of the new place God's got for me. Can I get a witness somewhere? Yeah. We get around the abortionist. 
And that person is full of negative thoughts, negative words. Oh, what are you doing that for? Why are you going there? How can you possibly do that? But approximately two days prior to that, you started to see a breakthrough. You started to see God begin to do new things in your life. You felt the baby kicking. You felt hope inside of you. For the first time, you saw your dream come into life. And as soon as you got anointed with that dream, the the abortionist came to take that baby. You gotta just look at that person in the eyes. Say, love you, sweetie. God bless you. But under your breath, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I will not receive that into my spirit because you're gonna abort my child. your neighbor and say every word that comes into these ears is sanctified shut those ear gates up in the name of Jesus and then how many abortions or miscarriages have taken place because the moment we believe we didn't know how to protect what we conceived through prayer. We got all busy. And we got so busy we didn't spend any time with God. And the only way that baby's going to grow is do what Elizabeth did. She hid herself for five months. Nobody knew where she was. She shut in. She knew she was of great age. She knew she was biologically barren, and she wasn't going to let nobody take her baby from her. So we see this great miracle, and we see how she protected that seed inside of her. Then the third supernatural secret to the deliverance of a destiny is how a divine connection will raise your dream to perfection when you get around the right people. Touch your neighbor and say, I got to be with those God's connected me with in the spirit. Okay. Now, there may be a lot of folk that you really love, but this is the time to really make some decisions. Who thinks like you? Who walks like you? Who believes like you? Are you around people that don't like to consecrate as much as you do? And are you fellowshipping all the time? I mean, there's nothing wrong. You've got to have friends. You've got to have a life. But are you pouring yourself into the wrong stream? And the scripture tells us here that you've got to, to, to know that divine connection because that divine connection will raise the dream to perfection. And it's prophetically prefigured when Elizabeth and Mary meet. Age is no difference. Touch your neighbor and say age is no difference. Elizabeth was a lot older than Mary, but they had so much in common because what they had in common was not in the flesh. What they had in common was the spirit. Somebody ought to say it has nothing to do with ethnicity. It has nothing to do with, with your age. It has nothing to do with how, how old you are or how young you are. This means if you're carrying a dream, you must be around people that activate and motivate the dream inside of you. That means being around somebody that's a kinsperson in the spirit. Touch your neighbor and say, do you know your real kinfolk? I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about here. The Bible says that Mary was told by the angel, your cousin Elizabeth. In another text, it says your kinswoman, Elizabeth. Kin does not necessarily mean flesh and blood. Kin in the realm of the spirit. It means somebody who has a kindred spirit just like you've got. Somebody ought to say, find somebody with a kindred spirit. Find somebody that believes like you believe. I can't get any help in here.
The meeting of Mary and Elizabeth shows us the essential element how these relationships are seen as divine connections. Touch your neighbor and say, treasure the heavenly relationships that God has given to you. Come on, somebody. Treasure the heavenly relationships. Touch your neighbor and say, do you know the Elizabeths? Do you know the Marys? Do you know who you're supposed to be connected to? Come on, somebody. The meeting of Elizabeth and Mary prophetically prefigure how the babe leaped in Elizabeth's womb. This means that the meeting of the two brought an activation and a divine manifestation of the dream. In Luke chapter 1 verse 40 and 41, the text teaches that when Mary met with Elizabeth... The babe leaped in Elizabeth's womb, so that means if your dream is dormant, you're not around the right people. Hello, somebody. I don't know if you heard this or not. I said, if your dream is dormant, you're around the wrong people. Touch your neighbor and say, are you being challenged? Are you being stirred? Has the baby leaped in your womb lately? Have you felt the baby kick? Or is your dream dormant? Because if your dream is dormant, you need to find the right people that you're supposed to be connected to. Can I get a witness somewhere? 